Hey everybody, welcome back to Off The Grid Tiny House. We are on day 20 of our 50 day challenge. If you wanna learn more about that, check out our intro video. In our last episode, we completed the framing details of the tiny house, and in this episode, we're gonna be installing base flashing, insulation over the top of the fenders, and a WRB, or weather resistant barrier, to the walls of the tiny house. Now is a good time to review the perfect wall and talk about how the air control layer for the floor and roof will connect to the air control layer of the walls and bump outs. Air control layers are only as good as their weakest point. So it's important to make sure that there aren't any gaps between the different layers. In the subfloor, the air control layer was the taped EPS foam. We connected it to the sill plate with spray foam. The sill plate was connected to the plywood sheathing with caulk. The plywood sheathing is our main air control layer for the walls. We use tape to connect each sheet of plywood together so air couldn't go between them. The plywood is connected to the top plate with caulk. We also use caulk to connect the roof sheathing to the top plate and tape the seams between the OSB. We also use tape to connect the bump out sheathing and roofing to the main walls. You can see how the primary air control layer is complete and all connections between the different materials are covered with the exception of our window and door openings, which we will discuss in our next episode. Let's take a quick overview of what we hope to accomplish today. We will be spraying some foam insulation into the space between the fender and the subfloor. That space will be covered by base flashing, which helps to ensure any water that runs down the walls of the tiny house will get kicked out away from the trailer frame. The last step will be to wrap the tiny house in Tyvek weather resistant barrier and tape like a giant birthday present. Spray foam is a pretty nasty material. It isn't good for the environment, it's difficult to remove from skin and clothing, and it has a tendency to get stuck inside the gun that I use to apply it. That having said, it's an excellent insulator and air barrier and relatively easy to install in the tight areas that we wanna make airtight and insulate. One of the areas we had to spray foam before attaching the WRB was in the bump out cavity that is between the subfloor of the bump out and the two by four supports that hold up the end of it. I sincerely hope that scientists come up with a better alternative in the future, but for now, there's no other solution I'm aware of that can insulate and air seal the tight curved area between the fender of the trailer and the subfloor. After applying spray foam to each fender cavity, I nailed base flashing all around the bottom of the trailer. Here you can see how the shape of the base flashing is very useful for turning water that comes down the wall out and down away from the trailer frame. To get around the fenders, I cut slits in the vertical part of the flashing, allowing the horizontal part to curve around the fender. At the corners, I cut a slit so the flashing could run long and overlap with a matching piece on the other side. I used rivets to tie each piece of flashing together and galvanized nails to nail it to the sill plate. The galvanized metal used on the base flashing and nails is less prone to corrosion and recommended for exterior use. Last, I used some tape to seal the top of the base flashing to the wall. If you're enjoying these videos and learning a lot, there's many ways to help us out. You can like the video, subscribe to our channel, or visit our Patreon page, and for a small monthly donation, get access to things like behind the scenes videos and Q and A's. If you're building your own tiny house, you can use the links in the description below to order your tools and materials. We really appreciate all those who've helped us out and make this channel possible. There are many different types of weather resistant barriers, but Tyvek is the cheapest, most popular one out here in California. You might wonder why we're using a weather resistant barrier instead of a waterproof material like plastic sheeting, and that's a really good question. Building scientists have discovered that keeping water completely out of an area of a house is extremely difficult. They found that once water finds its way into the walls of the house, however, the plastic sheeting can prevent it from ever drying out. Studies show that materials like Tyvek do a great job at keeping water out of the walls while still allowing any moisture that does get into the walls back out. It can be a bit confusing. Before attaching the Tyvek, I cut out the window and door openings the same way I cut out the bump out openings in our last episode. We started wrapping the Tyvek around the trailer just above the base flashing. You wanna leave a small gap at the bottom so the Tyvek doesn't just sit in the bottom of the base flashing in case any water pools there. There's no need to worry about the window and door cutouts. Just run the Tyvek right over them. We use cap nails to attach the Tyvek to the wall, but tried to keep them to a minimum. 
So if you've wrapped a birthday present, this is basically all we're doing. When we're going around a corner, we're trying to keep it as nice and tight as possible. You can see here with the bump out, we've created a little fold and you know, we'll, we'll make some cuts and, and we'll tie part of it over so that it overlaps. But you know, we're just keep, trying to keep it as tight as possible. Every episode I want to talk about mistakes I made and it really hasn't been hard to find a mistake every episode and that's just part of doing construction and if you decide to build your own tiny house you should be ready to make plenty of mistakes as well. On this episode, uh, you know back when I had cut out the plywood sheathing for the walls of the tiny house, I had kind of just gone real quick cutting out areas for the fender and you can see here how I left a little bit of room extra and I figured it wouldn't be a big deal because it would be covered up by siding and really it's it, I couldn't attach it to anything anyway so there really was no use to to leave it long like that however when I was putting in the base flashing on this episode I realized that I kind of needed it to attach the base flashing to I realized my mistake on the second side and cut it much closer. And this made attaching the base flashing a lot easier. You know, it's just a good example of how sometimes you can just start going a little too fast and think that something's not important to pay attention to detail. But you may find out later in the build that eh, you probably should have slowed down there and paid a little more attention to detail. We have something really exciting in store for our next episode. We're gonna be installing the windows and doors. With the windows and doors installed, our tiny home will reach the dried in stage. I hope you can all join me in our next episode as I tell you what that means and show you how to install the windows and doors. <laughs>